Hello, and this is an Algebra 2 video working on motion. So we are going to start a project uh, that involves physics, and we're going to need the basics of the motion equations. Well, when I talk about motion, there are three basic ways objects move through space. So, like, everything in the world is described by moving in three different ways. So things cannot move, they can stand still, move at a constant rate, or speed up or slow down. So if you're not moving at all, your velocity or your speed is zero. If you're moving at a constant rate, that means that your speed is the same throughout. Speed is equal to velocity through this. <clears throat> and if you're speeding up or slowing down, that's called acceleration, no matter what. If you're speeding up, or slowing down, it's just called acceleration. By the end of this module, you'll be able to uh, use and actually derive the motion equations and apply them to real life situations. So the first thing you need are the key terms in this. So velocity, uh, capital V, um, is meters or seconds per uh, centimeters per second in this project. It's uh, one or the other. Uh, typically, we're going to be talking centimeters per second for this project. T is going to be time measured in seconds. A is acceleration, which is meters or seconds or centimeters per second squared. X or delta X, the change in X, is the change in distance. So meters or centimeters, how much things move. V with the little zero underneath is called the initial velocity. Uh, it's also called V naught. Um, and it's our starting speed. What's our initial speed? And you will also uh, run into G, which is Earth's gravity. Um, it's an acceleration, which is 9.8. It has a fixed value, 9.8 meters per second squared or 980 centimeters per second squared. So let's start with uh, motion equation number one. Motion equation number one, you can actually derive yourself. Uh, so let's talk through this example. You're driving down a road at 60 miles per hour, and then you accelerate at 2.5 miles per hour per, uh, per minute for 10 minutes. How fast are you going after those 10 minutes? So you're going to start off at 60 miles per hour. You're accelerating, you're going faster uh, two and a half miles per hour every minute, and you're going to accelerate for 10 minutes. So you take your starting speed, 60, and then you're accelerating, so you're adding more speed, 2.5 miles per hour for 10 minutes. So 2.5 times 10, or, and so you get 60 plus 25, so you're going 85 miles per hour after 10 minutes. So I'm going to equate that to the terms we just used. So the 60 miles per hour is our initial speed, our v naught. 2.5 miles per hour is our acceleration. And 10 minutes is our time. 85 here ends up being our final velocity, or our v. So our motion equation number one is v, our final velocity, equals our initial velocity, v naught plus our acceleration times our time. It's a very simple motion equation, but we use this to derive the second one. The second one talks about average velocity. So average velocity, physicists say it's x over t, or the distance that we travel divided by the time. Mathematicians say it's our final velocity plus our initial velocity divided by two. Average, right? We add the two things together, divide by two. Well, motion equation number two is melding both of those. So it's saying when these are equal. So we take our motion equation number one right here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug it in for this V here. And I get this, okay? so. All I did was I changed this V right here 
and it became our initial velocity plus a t, and I kept my other initial velocity. Now I'm going to combine like terms, and what I do is I'm trying to get my x alone or my distance alone. So I'm going to multiply both sides by t, so I get x equals a t squared plus 2 v naught t divided by 2. And now I'm going to simplify by dividing each one of these by 2. And I'm found my, my motion equation number 2 as my distance, my x, equals 1 half a t squared plus initial velocity times t. So these two equations are going to be used throughout our project. The next few problems uh, go through examples of how to do this. So the first thing you want to do, and this is an example for number one, is label what variables you know. So an airplane accelerates down a runway at 3.2 zero meters per second squared. Anytime you see that second squared, you know that's acceleration for 32.8 seconds until it finally lifts off the ground. Determine the distance traveled before takeoff. So the minute you're determining the distance, that means you're solving for x. And they gave you your acceleration is 3.2, your time is 32.8 seconds, and you actually have an initial velocity. Your initial velocity before you even start is zero. So I'm going to use my second motion equation, and I plug in the values I know, and I just solve. So I get 1,721.34 meters. Not per second, just meters. In example number two, a race car accelerates uniformly, means uh, throughout uh, the same acceleration throughout, uh, from 18.5 meters per second to 46.1 meters per second in 2.47 seconds. Determine the acceleration of the car and the distance traveled. So we actually need uh, two equations for this. Uh, we have to find the acceleration, and then once we find the acceleration, then we have to find the distance. So, the first thing we have to do is our initial velocity is 18.5, our, our final velocity is 46.1, and our time is 2.47 seconds. So I use my motion equation number one, I plug in the values, and I solve for a. Once I have a, I use that A and my information from the problem, and I plug in values to find the distance that I travel, which is 79.76 meters. For the next equations, use those two equations and the two examples I gave you to solve these. I provided the answers right here, so you can pause the video when needed and come in next class with any questions. Thank you.